Hey guys, it's Vince. Today in this video, we're going to be looking at a video that I've put together from other videos on YouTube of end users reflecting their electronics in order to more or less show how a system is to be built. This video is one in a short series that will follow in the next few weeks. They are wanting you guys to understand that this is what they did to get their system running. Now, in all cases, naturally, they don't have any ill intent. But unfortunately, just because you don't have any ill intent does not mean that the information that you've used to build your system was correct and therefore the work reflects it. Um, for those of you just looking at the channel, I have well over 400 plus videos online. I've worked with uh, Boeing. You can see they're using one of my systems right here. Um, I've worked um, to discuss Lincoln Electric's PDF on EMI and noise, um, and especially dealing with production robotics. And we can just go through this manual briefly and just highlight, you know, what EMI is, electromagnetic interference, um, any type of plasma systems or CNC robotics, these are going to produce electromagnetic interference at a much higher rate and therefore those that noise can interfere with your signal production. Many of you already know this, it's been discussed. Plasma systems are some of the worst in that you will get a lot of problems and most of the controllers you're about to see me discuss are going to be just that, plasma systems. And that's why it's really scary because most end users want to do plasma systems because we all know they produce the highest amount of ROI for time invested and they're trying to do it with the least amount of money. Now, Lincoln Electric uh, offers plasma CNC robots in excess of $50,000, $100,000. It's not applicable to most end users. However, that does not mean we go to the ultra short end of the stick so to speak as far as money investment and expect to get a system that will even be stable most of these end users in these videos i'm about to show you never really show long cuts they might show motion they'll show you their electronics they'll discuss what they've hooked up but they don't actually show you an eight hour shift or show you this robot being stable for duration if you're expecting stability over duration I highly recommend you review what I'm just leaving on the screen right now and you can read for yourself what's involved with proper grounding of a system of these calibers. Now keep in mind that while a plasma robot generates the most amount of EMI present for again any type of noise situation, CNC itself as a mill a, a router all of these other applications still should follow the same premises again with double shielded cable. Motor cables are typically wrapped in a foil ground shield which will typically be connected to the CNC controller's internal ground. Now they're writing this and you can see here Faraday cage concept shielded enclosures. Let's go over to the first video and see exactly what's going on. So we're going to start it right now. We'll start at the electronics box first. Now I know some of these may be comical to some people. You can see we've got a parts enclosure being used for a plasma controller uh, enclosure. So it's running off 24 volt. That's the Arduino and the CNC shield in there. Notice the electrical tape. And the voltage. Notice the wood backing that he's mounting the drive and electronics to. And I'm going to clarify something which I've stated in previous videos. It is not best practice. It is extremely unsafe to mount any flammable material underneath electronics. God forbid there is a short and it arcs, you could instantly have a fire. If you do and your insurance finds out, you will not be paid if they do a, an investigation of why, why the fire actually occurred. You can check on this and see if I'm correct. Call State Farm, call Progressive, Geico, whoever you have in the world call your insurance company and find out if i'm right i've stated this before for some reason guys think that they can mount on whatever substrate they want use common sense guys that is why professionals they'll come over here and shielded enclosures circuit boards generate emi they uh and are affected by products with circuit boards are often shielded within metal enclosures that function as faraday cages when the enclosure is made of metal sheet or mesh or painted with conductive paint and connected to the reference potential earth ground it behaves as a faraday cage holes in the enclosure for cables buttons indicators etc allow emi to leak out and should be kept to a minimum so again i'm not stating this they are if you don't believe me 
then I highly recommend you contact your insurance company about what I'm telling you. There is no point in being in safe. You said, hey, that's just for the water cooling. This uh, rear lake here, it turns on and off the plasma off. It literally just bridges two terminals on the machine, turns on and off. Um, that's the drivers that I'm using to run the meters. Now, again, I want you guys to see right here, we'll come back a little bit. I want you to see all of these connectors are not insulated either. We come forward just a little bit. You can see all those GX16s that are wired here, none of them are insulated. There's no heat shrink. I mean, this is a mess, guys. This is trouble. I doubt the system is stable. I'd be shocked if it was stable over eight hours. We see no shielding, no grounding, nothing, not even mentioned. Okay, we'll continue. Of uh, this company's... I will naturally edit that out. They sell. they sell. You guys see this? Command, CNC. I am no longer recommending anyone use their controllers because they don't have very good support and they like to blame the customer for all the problems. And due to the DIY nature of this table, it's really easy to blame people like me that are building it for the first time and I thought that I had a lot of issues with my shop. So I spent countless hours uh, making changes to the power in my shop, um, driving uh, grounding rods in my shop, um, unplugging the machine anytime I wasn't using it so it was fully insulated uh, because we were having trouble anytime there was lightning. Literally, anytime there's lightning in Tennessee, this machine blows up. So if you're in Tennessee and you have lightning, boom, you're going to be driving to Texas or shipping your uh, controller off to go and get it repaired. Literally what happens is, I'll show you guys inside these machines, because I uh, I was dumb enough to buy two of them, as you can see. Each one of these with the computer and the motors and everything that comes with it costs 3500 bucks. $3,500 for controllers that, out of his own mouth, are giving him issues with, I guess, a lightning storm or whatever. He goes into right, more detail. Right here. This card right here digital torch height control blows up now i want you guys to pay very close attention to how this controller is constructed this is supposed to be a professional institution once again developing these units you can see gecko g251x drives i sell these drives these are the same drives inside a gecko g540 they've used a proprietary motherboard and are using excellent drives as far as the other components what we're finding out from this client of theirs is that their torch height controller keeps blowing up. So, again, don't always revolve everything around the drives because it's interesting to see how we look at the drives here and they have nothing to do with the THC. And this is something that happens a lot. And we'll listen to the rest of his uh, explanation of what's going on. All the time. And they like to blame the customer. They blamed me for blowing up their part. I don't know how many times. Eventually... I moved buildings uh, because they told me that my house power was gone, was bad. I sent them a video of my power being metered live while cutting, and I blew up their torch height control, and the voltage at my shop never fluctuated more than 2 or 3 volts, which if you guys know anything about electricity, you can have plus or minus 10% volts, and you really shouldn't have any issues. With okay. Um I'm going to disagree with him right there. Uh, plus or minus 10% on volts on sensitive electronics like we're working with, they can cause issues. It depends on the voltage that we're working with. We want to really think about where we're going with stuff like this. It is a shame that this individual had the problems he's had with this company. I've heard this myself from other clients that I've done retrofits on. These are the issues that prevail. He continues. Any of your electronic equipment. So... Two or three volts out of 120 uh, fluctuation should not equal anything in a properly constructed electronic hardware kit blowing up. Well, it's interesting he said a properly constructed hardware kit. Um, I think we can all attest this is a very, very tight fit controller. I mean, there is a lot going on in there. We see a lot of boards. Uh, nothing really shielded. I don't see anything. Here's the ground. I see the grounding location, and there is, uh, again, it's labeled. So you really want to pay attention to what's being said and what's being done. 
looking at it from a vendor standpoint, listening to him as a client, the difficult side in my end is trying to make ends meet and really understand what his knowledge is. Now, he went to the extent of buying another system and still having the same issue. Something is definitely wrong. He's absolutely right. I don't know what the situation is with who he's working with, but these controllers here, plasma systems, are the most sensitive. If you do not know what you're doing and you think you're going to, you know, get by with, you know, doing, you know, half these all the way across the board as far as your time investment and monetary investment, you're going to have issues. And when I say that, it may not be in the beginning when all of a sudden you go to get motion. It seems like most guys look at that. It's when you actually go to do the long cuts or take a client's job in, that's when you'll notice you'll have issues. And it'll be sporadic most likely. But with this system and this one right here, because I have a second one so that I would never be down was the idea. But inevitably, I would blow up both of them. Unfortunately, he blew up two systems, and of course, uh, we never like to hear that. I'm going to continue next week with another video, and you guys will see the continuation of this series. I think it's a, there's a lot to learn. Thank you all for your support. Take care.